everybody, welcome to Dat Man Productions and welcome to Kind of Hey Real. Today we have another unboxing, and it's a pretty big box. And this one comes from Mr. Muffins. One of these days, I would love to visit Mr. Muffins Trains Hobby Store. A big, huge driving distance for me, so that's going to be on my one day bucket list. Unless somebody wants to sponsor that trip for me. <laughs> but at any rate, oh, so this is uh, another order from Mr. Muffins out of the Lionel catalog. Uh, after I said I was cutting back on Lionel products, but this was something I hope works out in the end. Um, at any rate, so let's open this up and uh, tell my stories as I normally do. So funny thing, um, and you'll see where this is going. Back in when I first started in 2015, uh, you know, I was getting, I wasn't sure where I was heading and all that stuff. And then by 2017, I figured out I wanted to be a high rail layout, uh, you know, and it was all inspired by meeting clubs at the train shows that I wanted to have a high rail layout. So that's the direction I took with Conahay Rail, finally, after being up, you know, for two years, and then going to High Rail. So, I started getting into buying nothing but scale size train, meaning all the trains I was buying for the High Rail layout, or my High Rail layout, was uh, true 148 scale dimensions. And I was trying to stick with prototypical road names. Now, most of your road names that you see today aren't too attractive, they're a little blah, but you know, railroads are not painting stuff in uh, colorful bubblegum wrappers just for our pleasure. <laughs> you know? but, so, you know, so you're going to see a lot of black cars or Tuscan brown stuff and just stuff that's just not um, uh, God, I hate, I hate peanuts, but I know it's better than getting them broken. Hold on one minute. So as I was saying, I got into buying uh, scale size trains. Big ones. So I started buying the Lionel Auto Rack cars because the MTH ones just were not, they were too short. They weren't true scale. Which is kind of funny because, you know, MTH Auto Racks were too short. Lionel Auto Racks were the correct size. However, <laughs> the Lionel intermodal cars or Husky stack cars were too short, and the MTH intermodal cars or stack cars, as railroaders called them, were the correct length. So I don't know. It's like you gotta buy all these different brands to get prototypical as far as you can get, but that's okay. And then I got into buying. Uh, the uh, 86 foot high cube box cars and the Lionel uh, 30,000 gallon modern tank cars. Um, so I was buying quite a bit of modern day stuff, which ended up not being popular back then because a lot of this stuff was coming out around 2015 and you know, it was a hard sell for Lionel for the 86 foot box car and the uh, 89 foot scale auto rack and even the, the 30,000 gallon tank car. The modern day tank car was a hard sell. However, what's happened is a lot of people who got into O scale want the modern day rolling stock. They want that modern day train that they see every day out there on the rails. Um, they're not looking to buy the uh, antique steam era 40 foot box car. They're looking to buy the more modern day stuff like the TTX IQ box car. Um, so it's sort of like turning around right now. You know, all that older stuff was popular three or four years ago, but now the modern day stuff is getting to be in high demand. Uh, back then, you could not 
You could hardly give away a 86 foot high Q box car, a line out version. I remember Grabowski's, uh, yeah, I think he was selling them for like, he was blowing them out for $75 each, which everybody would jump on that now. It's kind of funny how nobody wanted them back then. Now they're in a big, huge demand to where you cannot find them. I see wanted ads for the Lionel 86 boxcar, the high box boxcar, the Lionel auto rack, because nobody wants the MTH auto racks, because they're not true scale, unless you're somebody who's, uh, you know, running on 042 curves, then you would go that route. And then the line on 30,000 gallon tank cars. Those are the top three that I see all the time people are looking for. Which back then you couldn't give any one of those three away. <laughs> and all this story has, I just mentioned, has a purpose to it. Because Lionel did do another small, real small run of the 86 foot uh, high cube box cars. And I decided to go for the Penn Central version. And I know those who know the Lionel catalog are probably asking, Hey, Sean, why didn't you go for the Conroe one? By the way, the Lionel version was inspired by a real car. Uh, somebody's going to probably hate me for saying this, but uh, I... <laughs> For those who know me, I don't candy coat anything. Candy coat anything. I I give you my opinion, and and that's just it. I don't sugarcoat it. But uh, I really didn't care for the Lionel Conroe eighty six foot box cars this time around because he had graffiti on them. Graffiti is such a controversial subject. Some people like it. Some people don't. To me, it doesn't bother me either way. But. For my own railroad, it's not coming over here. <laughs> Let's run it on your railroad, and I'll appreciate it there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I didn't, and graffiti, yeah, I mean, let's face it, it's part of real life. Uh, you really do see graffiti cars out there. Some people absolutely hate it. Uh, they rather not see it on their own railroad or anybody else's. Everybody's got their own choice. If you want to have a graffiti car, by all means, I'm not going to uh, down you for that. That's cool. I mean, that's something that you like. Everybody has the right to own what they like. And if I don't like it, you know, or somebody doesn't like it, they can just pass it by and go on to the next car. Oh, yeah, well, all right. Well, I don't like that one. But this one's kind of cool over here, so... Uh, so that's what makes the world go around, you know. If I just same way on Facebook, or if you see a post you don't like, you don't need to leave a nasty comment or anything like that. Just pass it by and be done with it. So uh, this is really really cool. Uh, we're gonna take this out of the box and uh, look at it. Lionel did make a Penn Central before this one. We'll compare the two, we'll talk a little bit about a hit, the history behind the 86 foot boxcar, and we'll do an 86 foot boxcar train run. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. So let's get it out of the box. So I got the Lionel 86 foot boxcar out of the box, and my first impression is, I think Lionel should have included sunglasses to go with this. Because, man, is this thing bright. I mean, it is super bright. Yeah, the color is, for the Penn Central, is a little too bright. Um, it needs to be toned down a little bit. But, that doesn't bother me too much. But for those who are paint fanatics out there, yeah, it's too bright. So the uh, Lionel 86 foot box cars actually showed up in a Lionel train set called the Big Blue train set, which was uh, actually announced in the 2015 Lionel Volume 2 catalog. And it featured uh, four different uh, 86 foot high cube box cars and a Lionel Conroe SD70 Mac as a locomotive and there was actually a add-on 
locomotive that was powered you could buy separately. However, in 2015, I was just getting started and I was really not sure if I was going high rail or what I was doing. So, in the first couple years, I was sort of like trying to find myself in the world of O gauge, <laughs> so to speak. And then, as I mentioned, uh, as I was unboxing in 2017, I finally made the decision to become a. Uh, a high railer or O scale high railer and that's when I started really focusing on buying the uh, scale size trains at first I really didn't have any interest in the big blue train set I know people are like shocked <gasps> no <laughs> but at any rate um, so it wasn't until I got invited to the run for fun in 2017 sponsored by Henning's Trains and the North Penn O Gagers, and it was uh, located at the old train farm. Uh, that's where guests could bring a locomotive, and they would set you up with some freight cars or passenger cars to run with it, depending on what you wanted to do. So I showed up with my Conrail, Lionel Conrail SD80 Mac, and, and during that 2017 Run for Fun event, and they set me up with the 86 foot high cube box cars. I absolutely fell in love with them. And then uh, I decided, you know, to look further into it. Lionel had advertised these to run on 054, which was the biggest curves I had at the time in 2017. So I said, yep, they'll fit. And I bought them. When I finally built the. 15 car train and I decided to finally run it for its first video it derailed around every 054 curve that I had that's when I figured out that the kinetic couplers there was a little design flaw if they bounced a little bit while in that 054 curve they would uh, get fetched up and wouldn't be able to return to their straight position. However, a good thing actually happened out of that. It actually forced me to become 072 and then finally 080 when I still had issues running them on 072 and now I'm 080 on the outside, 072 on the inside. All I can say is that Lionel 054 recommendation just cross that out and don't even listen to it. 072 minimum, 080 it runs the best on. So after that set was made, I believe it was right around 2019, that Lionel introduced more 86 foot boxcars. The high box boxcars, as I mentioned, they weren't really a hot seller at the time. They were available in a four-door version and a eight-door version, which we'll talk about here in a moment. The 86-foot high cube boxcar was known as the Warehouse on Wheels by the railroad workers because they were so huge on the inside. I actually been inside a real 86-foot boxcar, and it really does look like a warehouse on the inside of it. At that point in time, the, the next run of those boxcars they were available as single or two car sets. The 86 foot high cube box cars were originally used for auto parts for manufacturers such as Ford, uh, General Motors, uh, divisions like Buick, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, Chevy, Ford was another one that used them. So they were really, really popular up until about the 80s. As I mentioned, there was a four-door version, such as you see here, and an eight-door version. While we're on this version, this is the original uh, Lionel Penn Central 86-foot high cube boxcar release. And as you can see, we'll move it back a little bit, you can see the color or shade difference. Yes, yes you can. But getting back to the story, so yeah, you had a four-door version and an eight-door version. The, the four-door version 
was cars that were for Ford and Chrysler. Both Ford and Chrysler wanted the four-door versions. This car right here. The eight-door versions, the GM plants wanted them, such as uh, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, so forth and so on. However, Chevy wanted both the eight-door and the two-door or four-door version. So you would have seen both at the Chevy plant in Janesville, Wisconsin. They used both of them. The GM plants, there were two GM plants in Flint, Michigan, which were Buick and Chevy. The Buick plant was served by the CNO. However, the Buick plant only wanted the four-door versions, which CNO uh, Railroad, they had the four-door versions. However, CNO did not have any eight-door versions, so therefore, the Chevy plant, which required both, was served by the GT or Grand Trunk instead because the Grand Trunk had both the uh, four-door and eight-door boxcars. So a little bit of real interesting history for you. During the 80s, the auto industry downsized. Basically, they started, uh, you know, packing their uh, car assembly plants up and shipping them down to Mexico. So a lot of these 86-foot uh, high cube box cars weren't being used or were not no longer needed. So many of the 86-foot box cars were not needed, so they went into uh, non auto part service, such as hauling cereal, tires, uh, paper, uh, tissue paper for Kimberly Clark, as an example. Lightweight stuff, because you cannot load these heavy because of their length. It would bow the center of the boxcar if you load them too heavy. Many of the surviving eight-door cars were rebuilt into four-door cars by Union Pacific. Uh, Union Pacific did a large majority of the eight-door conversions. And many of these conversions ended up on Union Pacific, Norfolk Southern, uh, Canadian National, CSX, uh, also, Canadian Pacific does have a handful of the conversions left as well. Moving along, CSX rebuilt Conrail 86 foot high cube box cars and relettered the um, reporting mark to NYC. They actually made them taller. Uh, it, I'm not sure for what commodity or for what reason, but they rebuilt them taller and gave them, uh, took out the CR reporting mark and put NYC in as reporting mark instead. The Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania did have a Conroe quality 86 foot boxcar donated to them, and that was an 8 door boxcar, and it was donated to them in 2010. Not sure if they still have it because they have sold off a lot of their, or sold off some equipment to help uh, fund their new roundhouse they're trying to put in over there. Uh, and as, you, as, as I mentioned, this is the previous run of the Lionel Penn Central A6 foot boxcar, high key boxcar, and it makes a great pair. It really does. So this is going to be a cool addition for my uh, 86 foot high cube unit train, my auto parts unit train. Alright, so don't go away because I want to give you some tips uh, as far as safety for these. Uh, so there are a couple things that you need to be aware of if you truly want to run these. I do not recommend running these on any type of carpet. Uh, and I'm going to go through all that here in a moment. 
so the Lionel 86 foot box cars feature what's called a climatic or climatic uh, coupler system. As you can see how it works, there's a lot of moving parts here. And they designed this so it could go around the tighter O54 curves, which I already mentioned it doesn't work and it gets stuck. Uh, so the one of the things or tips you're going to have to do is you're going to want to grease the top of these moving parts so they don't they they slide uh, like with a light coat of uh, graphite grease you don't want to use an oil because they don't get on your track so a light grease and then you're it'll be fine uh, and it'll also reduce the wear. Another issue that I have found and happened to me is that sometimes you'll get them out of the box where the coupler is loose or what will happen is you'll get it on the track and the coupler is too low and what happens then the uh, there we go. The thumbtack will rub the center rail. A lot of times this will not throw a circuit breaker or blow a fuse. This is called a resistive short. And imagine as you will, your toaster, when you go to make your bread, is a device that creates a resistive short to heat your bread to turn it into toast without blowing a breaker. So, it is very important that you make sure that your thumbtack coupler does not rub the center rail. And if it does, what will happen, there's a spring in here, which is going to be kind of hard to see. And it will heat that spring up super hot to where it starts to melt. That's what happened to me. So, what I recommend is when you get it out of the box, first thing you need to do is make sure that thumbtack coupler doesn't rub. Second thing, make sure that the coupler is tight and not loose. Third thing is make sure the coupler is properly adjusted. And I know you guys are like, all right, so how do you adjust that? So, I did make a video on that. I'll make it real quick. Basically, you take the four screws off of this plate, retaining plate, the coupler comes out and you take it and you bend it on the tab, either up or down and install it. You don't want to bend it while it's installed in the boxcar because you will break off this great step if you do. So you want to make your bends while it's removed from the car. Is it a pain in the butt? Yeah but it's the only way you're going to get it to adjust. Lastly, to keep this uh, you know, from touching the center rail in the future as if you know sometimes the screw might loosen, what I recommend that you do on anything that Lionel has with a climatic coupler is take liquid tape very cheap on Amazon. Cheap insurance to keep things from melting and getting too hot if something was to happen. Take lip, liquid tape and coat two coats to the to uh, this uh, thumbtack coupler. And if it, that anything does happen once you coat this, it will not create a short, and you'll be safe. So those are your tips uh, for this particular car. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying all this is because, like I said, these things actually did happen to me. I found all these things out, so I'm just passing along this information, hopefully to help somebody uh, in the future. So like I said, the climatic couplers can be found also on the line-out auto racks, and I believe they're 21-inch passenger cars. 
take liquid tape and coat those climatic coupler um, thumbtack couplers two coats and you'll never have to worry about a short okay let's put this in a train and run it this is the dispatcher do you copy roger that dispatcher I read you over okay start her up stand by for track orders got you dispatcher we're ready to move out